Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the set of 72 Pegos Color Pencils. And these are the traditional wax-based pencils. Also showing up right now on my YouTube channel is a review for the 72 set of colored pencils from the same brand. They sent them both to me to review, but I thought I would do these in separate videos um, in case you were only interested in one or the other. You wouldn't have to sift through half the video to find out what you're looking for. So um, about a month and a half ago, this company reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing any of their products. They were a new company to me, so I checked out their uh, their store on Amazon. They're uh, an Amazon seller. And they had products that geared towards, I would say, a beginner, hobbyist, crafter, um, kind of that mid-range. It's not a not a children children's supplies, but I wouldn't call it like high-end artist quality supplies. Um, so I said the pencils would probably be the most interesting to my viewers, and I would give those a try. They also had like dual tip markers, like scrapbookers and card makers would use, um, watercolors, which looked kind of like, you know, the chalky little cakes that you see in craft stores. Um, and I think they had a few other like sketching pencils and easels and things like that. Um, but these were the two products that I found the most interesting. So this is what the tin looks like. There was very, a little minimal denting on it, um, but I'm not really concerned about that personally, as long as the pencils are good. And inside you have two trays of pencils. They're round and they have a teal barrel and they've got gold writing on them. I'm not a huge fan of gold writing because I find it very difficult to read. My Prismacolors have gold writing on them and I find that really hard to read. Um, but they're just numbered, that's how they're identified. So you don't really need to read the uh, the branding on there unless you know, unless you want to, but I find gold difficult to read. Oh, and I want to let you know a couple things. One, my favorite Color pencils are Prismacolor. Um, I know they're not the Prismacolor are not the best quality pencils in the world, but they're my favorite. So I think it's important if you're coming here as a first time viewer looking for color pencil reviews, that you know what my preference is because that might I might like things different than you like. And every artist is different, so I want to put that out there. And also the fact that the Pecos company sent these to me for free for review purposes. I did not purchase them. And also I have links in the video description where you can purchase them on Amazon. And if you do purchase them through my links, I will earn a small commission. I don't let um, the fact that something was sent to me for free or the fact that I put an affiliate link in alter my view, but I think you should know that just in case you want to weigh my view different, my opinion differently, knowing those facts. I just like to I like to be honest and have everything up front and you can decide how it's right for you. So uh, first things first, I looked through, I kind of spin my hands over it. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking to see if my leads are centered. So if I pull my hand across like this slowly and it seems like the lead is equal on all sides, I know I'm pretty good. And for the most part, these leads look pretty good. I think there is only like three that I felt maybe were a little off center. And there's a couple reasons why you want to check this, especially if you're buying open stock pencils. Now, if you're buying a pencil at the art supply store, um, a lot of times like Prismacolors, for instance, they are, they have been known for having some off center leads. And then these are Prismacolors are so soft that they'll break if the leads aren't very centered. So you can look down at the bottom. You can't do that with pencils that have capped ends, unfortunately. So the way to test that, the way to see is simply by turning them in your hand. And can you see, you know what I'm going to do? I'll put this piece of foam down there and let's see. Let me be able to hold it up a little bit. Oh, maybe if I zoom in, I just want you to see this so that you can look when you're buying pencils, if you're buying them in store. So see when I'm turning these and you can see that you see more of that colored tip and then you'll see less. So if you've ever had a pencil like that, or maybe like an eye pencil, if you wear eyeliner, you'll notice when you sharpen it, you only get this little tip and then you get that stabby wooden part. Well, it's very annoying when you're coloring too, because, um, you sharpen your pencil and then you're coloring for a few minutes and then you you've hit the wood and they go to sharpen again So you waste a lot more lead out of the 72 I had a couple that were slightly off center, but it did not um, It hasn't hindered me at all and I think that's alright for a budget set. It's not it's not a huge deal it Happens with a lot of brands Prismacolor is awful <laughs> It's pretty awful about it actually, but I just wanted to mention that so three out of 72 had slightly off centered leads um, they sharpened really well. I didn't have any breakage issues. Um, and I swatched them out here so you can see the colors. Oh, we gotta zoom back out again now. Um, and the thing I really liked about the color palette, and you've heard me discuss this before with like markers and pencils, sometimes when you're, you wanna make sure that the colors in your set 
are different from one another, especially if you have a limited set. Now this is a set of 72, it's a lot of colors, but the thing that I've noticed is that all the colors are different from each other. Now sometimes you get a budget set of pencils, especially if they're a bigger set, you'll have so many colors that are similar. You'll have like five reds that practically look the same and three yellows that practically look the same. And I don't see any identical pigments. The uh, Even the 30 and 31, which both kind of look like ultramarine blue, one is definitely a little bit more on the purple side and one is a little bit um, more neutral. I, I don't see any colors that look like they're duplicated. So that's a really good sign. So that means every pencil here is going to do something different for you. Um, I also like the fact that they're numbered 1 to 72. They go pretty much in a spectrum order, or at least they make sense with how they're arranged in the case. Oh, mine have been mixed up a little bit because I've used them, um, and I couldn't be bothered to put them back in the right order. But the other neat thing about these, if you're considering getting both the colored pencils and the watercolor pencils, is that the watercolor pencils and colored pencils use the same color numbering system and the same, it looks like the same pigments. So if you want to do your, like, you want to do an underpainting with the watercolor pencils, liquefy it, and then work over it with the colored pencils to save loads of time, um, they're going to match perfectly. If you wanted to be really fastidious about it and pick out the exact same colors, you can do that. Um, so that's not something you typically see in budget pencils. That's like something you see in like Faber-Castell. So I think that's, uh, that's terrific. Now, uh, layering is something you're probably interested with or interested in if you are a color pencil artist. And to be honest, this is the first time I've ever done this, um, this exercise. And if you're wondering about my swatches, I get asked every time people say, how do you get the, those boxes for your swatches? These swatches are actually a stamp set and it's by Waffle Flower and I actually grabbed the package because I didn't realize until just today that it's got a 10 step grayscale thing for doing like layering examples. So that's what I used for that. And then I used this one here, but I just stamp it out a bunch of times. Um, actually, I stamp like a full sheet of watercolor paper with this and then I just cut it out as needed. Uh, but these are great. If you just need these, there's actually a free printable on the Waffle Flower website that you can just print off. At least it was last time I checked. So um, if you're not going to use like a water media or you have a printer that I guess handles watercolor paper and waterproof ink, you could use that. But I like the stamps because I'm usually, usually if I'm swatching, I'm swatching water media. Honestly, I typically don't swatch my colored pencils because I rely on just looking at the tips of the lead. Now, one ding that I would give this set, well, there's, there's actually two cons that I have for this set, and I'll list out the pros and cons in the video description, as always. The, um, the well, the first con is not something I'd really expect for a budget pencil, but um, there's no light fastness information. So if you're going to do works of art with these, you probably would want to stick to working in a sketchbook or maybe using it for card making, something where you're not expecting your artwork not to fade over the years. Um, if you do a gorgeous painting with these and you hang them up, and you you know hang it on the wall, it could fade because uh, there's no light fastness information. The other ding is that the the like color, uh, the color references on the back are not perfect. Some are pretty good, um, but some are off. Let's see, that's color 60. Gold writing, okay, three things, gold writing, but that's personal preference. Let's see, no, it's it's 09 actually. <laughs> see, the uh, this looks much more like a cherry red and the uh, the swatch looks more like a tomato red. So I mean, you'll I would definitely recommend making a swatch because the colors, or, or if you don't want to make a swatch, what I always do is I look at the tip of the pencil when I'm when I'm choosing my color, as opposed to looking at the color flash on the end. So this one's not too bad, but it's not perfect. I mean, it isn't. So that would be that would be a ding. Definitely, there are other pencils that get the color matching better. Like Prismacolor does a better job at the color matching on there. Um, on their barrels. So the, the barrels of these are teal, so if you had these out in their watercolor pencils, which are like a charcoal, I can show you, we've got like a charcoal barrel, um, they, you can tell them apart if you have them all on your table while you're working, which is really nice. Um, and uh, you know what, I didn't mention about the color ends with the watercolor pencils, because I think you always really need to swatch water media, watercolor paints, or watercolor pencils, because it's you can't look at the tips of the pencil and tell what you have. So you've got to swatch them anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal with the watercolor pencils, but I definitely, definitely felt it was a bigger deal with a colored pencil. That's personal preference, you know? Yeah, take my little idiosyncrasies into account. So I decided I would do a layering test. Now this paper that I'm working on was the Arteza Cotton Watercolor Paper Cards. I had a little cutoff of one for some reason. I'm pretty sure that's the brand that it is, either that or the Strathmore, but for whatever reason I had trimmed a piece off of it and had saved it because, you know, a one by 
five inch piece of paper is pretty valuable. Um, well, anyway, I used that to do my little gray scale, so, or my layering scale. So first I did one layer over the whole thing, then starting the second box, I did another layer, third box did another layer. So I was able to build up eight layers with very little pressure, like barely holding onto the pencil. Like if you have arthritis, you could go up to this dark, and this is the color here, number 36 from that swatch. You could go, and this paper is a little more textured, that's why it's grabbing more color and looks darker. So on this paper, I did eight layers without having to uh, use more pressure. And then nine and 10, I started adding more pressure, but it didn't really change the, uh, the hue that much or the, uh, the intensity, I should say that much. So I would say you can get about eight layers. I'm typically not somebody that's building up a lot of layers in my work. I tend to use color pencils over top of other paintings, like a, uh, use it on top of watercolor or marker art. That's why I like Prismacolors the best. That's, um, I think that's the reason why. Uh, but if you are looking to do 100% colored pencil works and you wanna be able to build up light layers, these are, gonna, these are gonna do it. Now I can't guarantee they'll be light fast, but if you want to, you've got say a, a set of polychromos and you just want to get that practicing in, but you're afraid of wasting your expensive pencils, these would be a wonderful set to practice with and um, to learn the techniques before you bust into the, the pricier ones. This would also be an excellent gift for a beginning artist, a teenager, um, you know, somebody that's that they want decent supplies, but they're not necessarily going to be hanging their work on the wall <coughs> or selling it. Pardon me. <coughs> I've been talking so much this week. I think I'm out of uh, getting out of voice. Um, and these are reactive with both. I'll show you a couple different techniques, both alcohol marker and with, um, with odorless mineral spirits. So let me zoom in and let me grab a clear blending marker. And that way I can show you that technique. So um, this is just like an alcohol blender in a marker. I don't recommend using a brush tip marker for this because it will dissolve the, the um, alcohol or the wax pigment and it can build up in the nib, especially a brush nib, which is a little bit softer than like a bullet or a chisel. So you can use your alcohol markers to blend. All you gotta do is just color over. I should make sure that's juicy. Yep, it is. I haven't used this blender. You know, look, I could even smudge it off. See, it just dissolves it, turns it into kind of like a watercolor pencil. And then to clean the tip, what you want to do is just uh, scribble it off on scratch paper until it comes clear. The other way you can do it is with a Q-tip or a brush or a blending stump and odorless mineral spirits. And this is, I have Gamzol in here. And so you can dissolve it as well. So that could give you an alcohol marker, um, like a Copic look or a watercolor look without having to have the watercolor pencils. Um, I prefer to use watercolor pencils. They do dissolve easier in water and I like the effect better, but, um, but that's definitely an option for you. Now, um, let's see, what else did I want to mention? These are water resistant. So if I add some water, it's not going to smear. You might get a little bit of, of, of uh, lifting, but not very much. Can you see that very faint? So there's a little, you'll get a little bit on there, but let me hold it up there. Can you see just a very, very faint ghost of color, but they're mostly water resistant. Um, they're not super opaque though. I probably wouldn't uh, get these if you're looking just to do, if you're looking to do really like bright highlights on top of a watercolor painting, you definitely could add detail and shading and saturation, um, but bright, bright highlights, I would suggest getting like a, uh, white Prismacolor pencil. And in fact, if you're gonna buy this set of pencils, I would still recommend having a white Prismacolor pencil and a black Prismacolor pencil. So now let's look at some of the artwork that I did with this, with these pencils. Um, the first one here I'm gonna show you are these cherries. And I have a video, if it's not up yet, it will be soon, of creating these cherries with the colored pencils and also creating the, um, the watercolor pencil version and um, these layered up beautifully. They, I was able to get um, like the cast highlights here with a white pencil, um, but I did keep the pencils really light in the background. I didn't like press really hard. And then I went in with a white Prismacolor and added a little bit of, of brightening and a black Prismacolor to add a little bit of depth. This is an oatmeal toned, um, oatmeal colored watercolor paper. I was very happy with how the pencils layered up and performed. I did use a little bit of odorless mineral spirits for the shadow there. And it, they were a dream to work with. I don't think that you would have any hindrance in learning with these pencils. And I think if, you know, like I said, if you've got expensive pencils that you're afraid to use because you don't want to waste them learning, 
get these. These are about 30 bucks a set, less than that actually. Um, and I also want to mention that because I think you need to, it's a good idea for you to know what price they are when I'm reviewing them because you know, if, if, a, if something costs $150, I'm going to be way more critical of its performance. And if something, you know, so if the price of those for some reason went up to $75, you know, I think it's important to know these, these are under $30 right now when I'm reviewing them. And hopefully the price stays, stays around there. I think they're an excellent value for that. And then, um, so that's watercolor paper. This was on Lennox. Um, I think it's called Lennox by Legion. It's a 100% cotton drawing paper and it's a little bit smoother. And for this, I used the white pencil from the Pago set to act as a resist. And I drew the little segments between the grapefruit first. And then I also masked, I used that to be like a resist for some of the little highlights. And then I colored my like red and coral and yellow and purple over top. And for the shadow, I used a mixture of the purple from that and some of the yellow from the rind. And then I used some gray in the middle and I used the marker to blend that out there. I did use a white Prismacolor for the bright highlights at the end because um, the, the white pencil in the Pegos Color Pencil Kit is not is not going to stick on top of many layers and it's kind of weak. So it's good for preserving the white or kind of denting the paper so that you can have veins for like leaves, things like that. But it's a little too hard and uh, translucent to really be a strong um, highlight uh, highlight medium at the end. Um, but I find that to be the case with most sets of color pencils. Um, even like polychromos, I find their white to be a little weak. I like the Derwent Chinese white if you want a really thicker lead uh, pencil. And I like the Prismacolor white for um, for doing my highlights because they're just so opaque. The Derwent lead is more durable, but it's a thicker, drier lead. And the Prismacolors, um, uh, you can sharpen it. It seems like you can sharpen the Prismacolor to a sharper point, but it does break easier. So, um, you know, pros and cons. Uh, but I was pretty happy with that. And then I used it in conjunction with the watercolor pencils to do um, this artwork here, this bird. This I have a time lapse on my YouTube channel and a real time version of this in Critique Club tutorial. I did the background with the watercolor pencils, two layers. And I also did the first layer or two with, I think the first two layers, with the watercolor pencils and then I layered over with the colored pencils that I'm reviewing right now. And it worked great. <clears throat> I did use a little bit of um, of brush and pencils, titanium white to do the feather, the really, uh, really bright white little feathers there. But, um, but for the, and I think I used some black Prismacolor to do the shadows on this like metal part that he's perched on. But um, all in all, those pencils performed really well. I think that um, they would be a wonderful gift for anybody looking to get into art or somebody that, that wants a good set of pencils to practice with that they're not gonna, you know, break, break the bank. They're not gonna like hinder themselves because there's nothing worse than having poor quality supplies that actually make you feel like you're not a good artist, that make you backslide. Um, that's not gonna happen with these. I was really surprised when I got these that they were um, that they were as good as they were for the price. I would put them in the same category as, um, as the Cezanne pencils that you can get at Jerry's Autorama as the Art and Fly pencils. Although the Art and Fly pencils are a little bit more, uh, they're oil based, they're a little kind of, they're creamy and smoother um, and a little more translucent than these, but very, very similar in feel and uh, in um, quality. Also the Color It pencils, they remind me a lot of the Color It pencils. And those are the only ones that are popping to mind right now that are similar that I've tried, but, um, but I would actually recommend all of those brands as far as a budget priced pencil that would, um, that will get the job done. So I would say they're probably medium softness, not as soft as a Prismacolor or, or a Color Soft, probably pretty close to the softness of a Polychromos. Um, and those other uh, value sets that I just recommended. But um, you don't need to use a lot of pressure to color with them. I like that because I know a lot of people have issues with arthritis. And, um, and there you have it. And I'll just show you a quick comparison with the watercolor swatch again. The watercolor pencils look a little more vibrant to me, especially once you add the water to them. But uh, the colors are, they're the same. They're the same. It's really nice. It's really nice if you want to, um, you know, if you want to mix the brand, mix the two types of pencil and keep a cohesiveness between the colors. They also remind me of um, the old Spectrum Noir, uh, what are they called? Color blend pencils when they had the black barrels. Now they have a thicker barrel. They're a little bit different, but these remind me of the old style of those as well. So um, this probably like a, this probably, they could all be manufactured for, from the same company for all I know, because I know a lot of 
um, a lot of new companies and craft companies will outsource this stuff to different different suppliers, different makers, and have a, have it private labeled, kind of like your grocery store has, you know, their own brand of Cheerios, um, because it, it's just too much research and development for new companies to do everything themselves. Um, but it can bring some really good quality, inexpensive products to the market and that I like. So there you have it. I recommend them. I think they're a great buy. I think if you're buy shopping for, if you're a crafter, you want something for card making or scrapbooking, something that's not going to be hung on the wall in direct sunlight, um, go for these. They might be fine hung on the wall. I don't know. I just don't want you to spend like, you know, two weeks working on a, on a picture and then have it fade in a year or two. But, um, definitely kids learning how, learning how to use colored pencils, you know, as long as they're beyond the stage, beyond the age of dropping them on the floor all the time, because I didn't have any breakage issues, but pencils do not like to be dropped on the floor. So you definitely want to make sure your kids are over the dropping them on the floor age. And I would definitely recommend them. Um, I was so surprised. These are, these are a gem and I hope the price stays nice and low. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please give me a thumbs up if you like these. And if you like this review, go check out the review for the watercolor pencils. You might like those too. I wanted to go in depth and I knew it would take me quite a while to get through everything. Um, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to bore anybody that was looking for the other thing, <laughs> waiting for what they wanted to hear. So thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.